Welcome to the Virtual Antics, your go-to podcast for digital entrepreneurs powered by Nadora.org and NG Virtual Assistant. We're here to guide you through every aspect of business from networking to lead generation and so much more. Get ready to thrive in the virtual world with expert insights and our all-in-one solution, Nadora, where creating a digital business becomes a breeze. Let's dive in and revolutionize your business journey together. Welcome back to the Virtual Antics Podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Guzman, and today I have another fabulous guest on the show. I have Miss Sabine, who was a single mom to twins, and she overcame the hurdles of trauma and cancer. Her journey has been marked by transformative experiences, and today she is passionate about sharing how she navigated these challenges, turning adversities into triumphs. Welcome, Sabine. How are you today? I am great. Thank you for having me, Natalie. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm so happy to have you here. And just from reading your brief bio, I am just so amazed already about how much you've accomplished. So can you tell us a little bit about what you've gone through and where you are now? So I'm originally from Germany. I came to Canada by myself when I was 17. I started my first business by about 1920. Uh, In Canada, I was actually homeless at that point. And I started my first company back then. And I've been a serial entrepreneur ever since. I've had multiple businesses, most of them online. And yeah, and today I'm kind of semi-retired. And because I felt this urge to, and this desire, this passion to actually give back by sharing my stories and by sharing what I have done and how I've overcome little and sometimes a little bigger roadblocks <laughs> on this journey. But uh, I feel like I can help others with, uh, you know, with the challenges that we face. That's amazing. And it's definitely not hard. It's not easy to do. It's really, really hard. I know I talk about my story. I was a foster kid and multiple miscarriages starting our family. And I'm also a multi-entrepreneur and I feel like you get addicted. You open one business, you want to open yes. more. <laughs> That's what most most people who talk to me are like, okay, so now that you are kind of retired, because I said I retired from the from like having my own business, I, I said, Oh my God, I am busier than ever ever. I've never worked more in my life, but it's 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 I feel like it's driven differently. Like before it was more fear driven, you know, to provide for yourself and take care of yourself. And today it's definitely more joy driven where I'm like, okay, I want to do this. Like you, you know, like I get up four thirty, five o'clock and I'm like, okay, let's get to it. Let's spread the word, you know? So it's very different today than it was, let's say 30 years ago, you know? Yeah. And I think that's a lot of entrepreneurs. That's how they start. Right. It's like, they're at this, a rock and a hard place. And they're like, I have to get out of the situation I'm in. And I'm sure a big part of that for you was trying to raise your kids and have make money at the same time. I know that's how I got into my businesses was that I couldn't do both. And especially you had, you had twins, right? Right. So tell me a little so bit. So I, I went that. through fertility treatment too. I couldn't get pregnant. And then despite the fact that doctors told me you will never have children, I actually got pregnant with twins. And so those are that that's another amazing proof how, you know, what when your heart and soul is in it, you know, mm-hmm. anything is possible. And those are my miracle babies, so to speak, <laughs> that are now almost 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was told that too. I was told I would never get pregnant, and then I got pregnant, but I kept miscarrying. They're like, "You're never gonna be able to carry a baby to term." Right. And then I carried a baby to 35 weeks, and then I did it again 12 months later. <laughs> so, they, yeah, you can't. They don't know everything. They're doing their best, but they don't know everything. Sometimes you just gotta have the faith and believe in, you know, your gut saying, "No, I can do this." Yeah. yeah. So how was it trying to have all these businesses while raising our children? I I think the first thing that comes to mind, I wasn't very kind to myself. Like looking back, I feel like I really pushed myself super hard. And as you know, having kids so close together, I mean, when you have multiple children, you know, you, you don't get a break and, and yet somehow you push yourself so hard to do it all. And looking back, I'm like, wow. That was hard. <laughs> Where did you get the energy from, you know, to do this? But you do. It's it's unbelievable. It just 
it comes up because you have to. It's like mama bear steps into action. You can do things you never thought possible. And other people who have not been there don't think it's possible, but you can. You definitely can. It comes out of, it just comes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think what you said about, you know, not being kinder to yourself. I think all moms experience that at one point or another. And it's just like remembering to take the break. I know a big part that got me out of that was hiring. I had to hire someone. And so when I found the right people and I was able to kind of replace myself with employees, I feel like my life is a lot simpler now. <laughs> but yeah. back when I was trying to do it all myself, man, that's, it just shows you, you, you can't do it all yourself, right? You need a support you system can. or you need help. Yeah, you can. And I feel like I got to a point also where I realized something's going to give, like you can do it all well. And that's the problem. You can try to cover, like put out all the fires, you know, but you're not going to advance. And at some point you got to just say, you know what, I got to hand some of this over in order to be a better mom or in order to make this business more successful because it's not possible. It's not possible to do it all. Yeah, hundred percent. And then, you know, it's actually interesting because the episode just before yours is going to air, we had a guest on who talked about the seven pillars of life, right? And hers were like fitness and romance and financials. And she's, I was like, how do you keep it all balanced? She's like, you know, <laughs> you're always going to have one that's you're focusing on more than the others. And I think that's the biggest lie we tell ourselves as mom is that we can have everything balanced and everything can go well in all areas it's just not true no and yeah that's where you need to learn to let go yeah no and once you have a good person to support you you gotta hold on to those (laughs) 100 percent. yeah definitely build your tribe it doesn't have to be family I think that was another big thing is like when you're building your family a lot of people are like I don't have a family to support me. I'm like, you, you create your family and you choose the people that can create those strong b- bonds without having to be related by blood and you see amazing things happen. Yeah. And I, I mean, I never had that because I'm from Germany originally, I don't have any family here, but that's the other thing I learned over the years is that it's up to you to reach out that hand and ask for help, you know, and you will be surprised how many people love to help. And if you think about it, that's our greatest bliss in life. And that's what I know today with what I do today to support people and help people. It gives me so much joy. And our, I think our number one purpose on this planet is really to serve others, to be there and give to others. And so you will be surprised how many people will be delighted to help you, you know, but it's up to you to reach out that hand and overcome that hurdle of feeling like it's weakness. You know, like, oh no, I should be able to do this on my own. I should be tough enough. No, 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 you shouldn't. Actually, it takes courage and strength to overcome that and say, you know what? Let me ask for help. And you will see people will be so happy to do it. Yeah, that's amazing. And I think it's just us taking that step. It's not gonna magically appear in our laps, although we wish it would. (laughs) We do have to, you know, step out of that comfort zone and be like, I need help. Because in the end, you are helping your children and you're helping your family. And so I think that's a really, really important thing. I love that. So tell me about how you're helping people now. So um, there's multiple ways. So originally, like while I was still running my last company, I, I started coaching people on the side for business as an entrepreneur, but also through life. Because I... One of the things that I've learned is that there's really three pillars to a balanced life. So it's the emotional, it's the physical, and then it's the spiritual. And like we said earlier, like to keep a balance and to keep this enjoyable and healthy, we need to balance all three. If we neglect one of them, you know, it's going to, that it's like a three-legged stool. It's not going to be stable. It's going to fall down. So, so I started helping people with, starting their businesses or running their businesses or growing their businesses. But then also I realized I had a lot to give when it comes to life experience in general. So I got certified as a coach, as a life coach, as a mindset coach, um, because I have kind of a little bit of a gift of changing people's perspectives on things. And because that's what I did throughout my life. And so that's what I do today. So I started coaching people 
full time. And then also I started a podcast called The Power Life, where I share stories about my life that where other people can see themselves in and say, well, wait a second, if she did that, I can do that, you know. Um, and then on top of it, I started my life dream of writing books. So I published my first book a couple of months ago called The Love Odyssey. Mm-hmm. And it's a little book about relationships and how to make them better and grow yourself in it. And yeah, so that's really the, th- the three main parts is the coaching, the Power Life podcast and writing the books. And I'm currently writing on my second book, which is called From Achieving to Becoming, how we get off that hamster wheel and really become. And when we become, it's from the heart and from the soul. And it's very fulfilling and joyful and meaningful versus, you know, achieving materialistic goals and then setting the bar higher and higher and higher and really never arriving, which is what I experienced. And it was such a frustrating, exhausting journey to be on. And so, yeah, I want to bring awareness to that, how you can turn that around and really live a very fulfilling, meaningful and joyful life instead. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. That's so cool. So what would you say, like, your, if you could describe your ideal client, what would they be like? What would they do? Who are they? So I work with men and women. And really, the ideal client is somebody midlife, mm-hmm. somebody who is probably anywhere from 35 to 65. And somebody who has woken up and said, is this it? Like, really? <laughs> And who realizes that there's more to it and is trying to figure out what that is, Mm -hmm. A, what that is, and then how to get there. And those are the people I work with, somebody who's really hungry to feel joy and feel fulfillment in their life. And, uh, And everything else then falls into place. Like once you do that, once you're on that path, everything else materialistic, the money that you need, magically falls into place it's a really an incredible thing when you navigate from your heart and from your soul yeah and I feel like it's so much more fulfilling right when you have like something you're actually passionate about I know a lot of times we're in our 20s and our 30s and we kind of just follow the path that lands in our lap because we're just trying to navigate and figure out you know where we are where we want to go and then we realize that's not our passion that just is, was a convenient path that was laid out for us right so I feel right. and, and I think it's something that and I write in my book about that. It's something we're born and we are born when you look at your children, you know, like they excited to get up in the morning and they have all these things that they want to do. And there's this curiosity and there's this joy and then they have a little tantrum in, be- in between and like they snap back out of it and they're back to having fun, you know, and that's something we forget because we get programmed by and i'm saying this and i don't mean it judgmentally at all like people do the very best but we get programmed by parents by educators by society what it is like how we should be thinking how what we need to achieve in order to be successful and our definition of success is something that's put upon us and then we realize at some point wait a second Okay. And that was, is what happened for me. Like I woke up one day and I was like, okay, let me check my vision board. And I checked all the boxes. I was like, you got this, 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 and this, you achieved it all. And I got really depressed. I was like, and now what? Like, I'm just going to set the bar higher and then I get there. And then what? And it's because we forget, we don't know anymore what our North Star is, what it is that really gives us that childlike, this joy, this excitement to get up in the morning. Like now that I do this, I I don't need to set an alarm. By 4.30, I wake up and I'm like, all right, let's go, let's get started. And uh, that's what we want to get back. But Unfortunately, it takes some work because we've been programmed to think differently and to, you know, define success in a way that's just, it was given to us. It was told how we should define ourselves and the success. And it's not, in most cases, it's not how we really deep down in our core or how we feel. Yeah. That's, and do you ever find like that a lot of time, like 
what some people will follow their passions, maybe in their 20s and 30s, and then their passions change and they realize that they're not passionate about that anymore. Yeah, because we evolve, right? I mean, and we change and we progress and our priorities change. And and that's why this kind of work is an ongoing work. Just because, you know, like we figured out in our 20s and 30s, like, yeah, let's power, let's hustle, let's build this business. But like I realized, I checked in with myself and I was like, okay, this is good, but I achieved that. And now what? Let's start peeling back those layers again and see what's inside and who we have become and who we want to become. And it really only takes one thing. It takes clarity to figure out, okay, what's inside? What's in my core? And once we become clear on that, we can reset our GPS. We can reset our North Star and say, okay, now I know what I'm going for again. Yeah, that's amazing. That's really cool. And so where can we find more about your services and what you do in your book as well? Okay, so the book is on Amazon called The Love Odyssey. It's actually within like, I think two weeks became a bestseller on Amazon, which I was really blown away because it was my first book. And I just, again, look at that. Like I had never written a book. English isn't even my first language. And I, I was told by my podcast producer, you need to write a book. And so I sat down and it just started bubbling up and everything that I had kept in my head or in notebooks all over just poured onto the screen. And I'm like, three weeks later, I was like, here's my book. And he's like, what? I said, oh my God, I have so much I want to give. Let me just pour it out. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. So again, you, you think you don't know, you think you don't know like how to do something don't worry about it put your heart and soul into it and look what happens so anyways that's the book on amazon called the love odyssey and then uh i'm on instagram it's sabina s-a-b-i-n-e underscore power underscore life and there's all my links on there too and then the podcast is on all the major platforms and it's called the power life and there's a website called the power life coach Awesome. I'll make sure I put all that in the show notes as well. But thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a blast having you. Thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Anytime. Well, we'll talk to you guys next time on the Virtual Antics Podcast.